How you doing, everybody? This is Dave Meltzer. We're going to be here talking about WrestleMania. This is one of the best pay-per-view shows. One of the best pay-per-view shows I've ever seen, and uh, probably the best one the WWF ever put on. We got uh, Steve Austin winning the WWF title with the help of Vince McMahon in the main event, which was a tremendous match. Uh, tables, ladders, and chairs, Edge and Christian coming out on top, getting the tag team titles. Probably, uh, I, I think that that match was um, probably better than the match they had uh, at SummerSlam. Uh, it was not not as many dangerous bumps, but I think the match made a lot more sense. Brian Alvarez, by the way, will be here any minute now. He's not quite back from his uh, WrestleMania party, which we'll talk about in uh, just a second. Uh, let me just go through the results, I guess, from the from the start of the show until Brian gets here. Uh, it opened, um, the dark match was X-Pac and uh, Justin Credible beating Grandmaster Sexe and Steve Blackman with a double super kick on Steve Blackman in 2 minutes and, 42, two minutes and 46 seconds. That match was actually added... Um, it was added at the last minute when uh, X-Pac uh, complained to Hunter, and he got on the card. A lot of guys uh, were originally not on the card were added at the last minute. Steve Regal losing, or William Regal losing to Chris Jericho for the Intercontinental title. Jericho retaining with a lion salt, 708. That match was actually kind of disappointing. Um, uh, decent match when they were in there. It was just a little bit short. Didn't really have enough time to build to what these two could have done. Not that there was anything wrong with it. Uh, then it was um, Taz and the and uh, the APA beating the RTC, Goodfather of Bull and Val Venus when Bradshaw did the clothesline on Goodfather. That match was the weakest of all the men's matches on the show. Only three minutes, 53 seconds, and, um, you know, I mean, there's it really wasn't a good match at all. Uh, then the, the three-way for the hardcore title, uh, Kane ended up winning it uh, in 9-18. That was almost all backstage brawling. Um, Raven took a lot of punishment, and the other guys, they did their part. It was all right. I mean, it was your, it's, it was really not a lot different from most of your other hardcore matches, except that Raven went through a window and bled a little bit going through the window, but it was your... Brian is here. Okay, let me just... We're just up. Brian, how are you? I am here. Yeah, very much are. Brian, oh, I yes. that this show... This was day where everything that could possibly go wrong did, but... But you're I'm here anyway. So. Yes. No, you know what? It, it, it could have been much worse. You know why? It could why? have been like WrestleMania 4. Oh, I know. At least it was a good show. I thought it was an awesome show. I thought it was the best WrestleMania by far. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, just the whole thing. I didn't get to see, like, the first uh, 20 minutes of the show. So I was like, oh, my God, everything did go wrong. Well, you didn't, you oh, didn't miss know. anything in the first 20 minutes, I'll say that. That's good. I was hoping that I missed, like, uh, China and Ivory and the RTC. And I missed one of them, but unfortunately I didn't miss uh, China and Ivory. But anyway, it was like I got there, and I mean, it just looked so awesome with, uh, you know, the building just totally, completely packed, the light show and everything like that. Uh, just the whole atmosphere was awesome, and, you know, four hours, tons of good wrestling, only a couple things that were kind of, uh, I guess Ivory and China was short, like everyone pretty much expected, but it was it still uh, stung. actually worse. It was worse than I thought it was going to be going in, but... Uh, yeah, that one, was, that one was bad, but, you know, I mean... I'll take I'll take one one or two bad ones when you got three matches like Angle and uh, Benoit the main event and the and the tables ladders and chairs those matches were incredible. Yeah, they were awesome. The thing was, I don't know if you've talked about. Uh, have you gone down all the matches one by one the main event yet? No, I'm only up to the Raven match actually. So well, let okay, me let me go cool. through. Let's uh, let's go through the results actually, of guys. Uh, uh, just real quick, we've got two callers on the line. Both of them are in Houston and both are right outside of WrestleMania from the from the well, show. Well, let's let's go. Yeah, it's uh, cool. Hector is up first, and then we have Ed. They're both in Houston. Here's Hector. First. Okay, let's go to Hector first. Hector, Hello, right hey, outside hey. the Astrodome. I, hey, Hector, what's up? I can hardly hear you because there's just a lot of noise. Yeah, hey, yeah, I was in Houston, and everybody here was for Austin. There was no heel turn. It was just everybody <laughs> here around the face. <laughs> even, even at the, even at the end when he was uh, drinking the beer with Vince? And even as far as the WWF, um, they did they programmed people to cheer for Austin, even at the Axis, because I went to Axis, and everybody was like, oh, um, like the WWF people, who's going to see Austin kick the raw ass tomorrow? And like, Hell yeah, you know, and all that. And they kept on repeating that and repeating that, and it was almost as, as if they were building the rock as a heel. Well, they, I think that the idea was to make Austin this huge baby face so it would shock the fans and they would turn even stronger when the time came to turn. And then the big trick was, when would, would McMahon be able to turn Austin? I think that the people watching at home, especially because you had JR and everything like that, 
For yeah. the people at home, it was a turn. But when I was watching in the building, you know, I could see in the building it was not a turn in the building. And this was. I a, mean, it's usually a good idea the whole deal to make a just a huge baby face do the heel turn because then they hate him even more. But last night it was like the wrong. I mean, for the formula to work, it was like the wrong guy in the wrong building on the wrong day for everything to work out perfectly. They could have it with Undertaker because Undertaker was over just as much as Austin tonight because I, I know he's from Houston and everybody yeah, here was the Undertaker signs everywhere. But the McMahon thing, the McMahon match, um, there was a lot of problems with that because they wrestled in different areas of the dome and a lot of people had bad vision for, bad vision for that match. They could get to see one part of the angle here, one part of the angle there. And it was too much everywhere with the WCW guys and the McMahon thing and Trish and Stephanie. It yeah, was but, 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 you know, you know on, the, on the WCW, let me get to that one real quick, too. There were some WCW guys. I thought that that thing came off very poor because, one, they didn't identify him, and, two, when you got to look at him, you, you saw there were no stars. You know, yeah. I mean, the biggest star in there was, was Johnny Ace and Lance Storm, you know? I mean, the worst part was, like, they came out and Shane just points up and goes, WCW guys are up there, and it's like they don't have a camera on them at the time, and they, they're trying to zoom in to get them, and they can't even do that. And it's like, man, these guys are stuck in the cheap seats, and they're supposed to be big stars. And a little they graphic that says boxes. WCW wrestlers. And yeah, they, they should have had every, they should have said who everyone was. I thought that was, uh, that was pretty weak. Yeah. And a bad way to introduce Plus that. Plus, everybody uh, booed when uh, Shane said WCW. Yeah, yeah everybody uh, here was all... Austin and Undertaker and uh, WCW people and uh, Gimmick Battle Royal, most of the people were asking, who are these people? Like, uh, in the front, really? I think the Marks knew, but, like, in the middle sections, everybody was lost. You know, they were asking me, you know, <laughs> who's this guy? When Gene Oakland came out and everything, I was surprised. So oh, yeah. you got to you got to remember a lot of the crowd, especially when you when you're talking about sixty five thousand people. Those are not hardcore wrestling fans. Those are people coming in because there's a big event coming to your city, and they're kind of aware of who the top guys are. And they're, you know, they're not going to know you know Volkov and the Sheik. By the way, Brian, you got that one right. That was a pretty clever one. <laughs> as soon as that thing started, Sheik was bug. standing in the ring, totally not moving, not even throwing punches. I just went, "This guy's got to win." Uh, he's going that. anywhere. Yeah, he. Oh. Oh, that was sad. After the show, uh, nothing really happened. Um, they, Austin drank a few beers with, with Vince. I don't know if that came out on TV. And then that after was. that, um, The Rock, they just played The Rock's music, and he got up and left, and Howard Finkel said thank you to the fans, and that was it. There's, there was no after show. And mm -hmm. before the show, um, that was just Sunday Night Heat, because it, yeah. it was really bad how the city set this up. I mean, the... It's very bad, the parking, very bad everything uh, around it, but the event was good. So I will let you guys go. Thank you. Okay, thanks a bunch. Thanks. Um, thanks a bunch. We're going to go to Ed. Ed is also right outside the Astrodome. Ed, what's going on? I'm too much, guys, but uh, what a show, man. I mean, the event was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. They really worked their butts off. And, uh, I thought it was a good match. It's just that hill turn just didn't work here in Texas. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when when Vince McMahon and Austin were drinking beer together, were they cheering or were they stunned? Or did they just not care? They were, it, it was like people didn't see McMahon. It was almost like really? he wasn't there. <laughs> they cheered Austin, and they, they just like, wasn't even there. Yeah. Oh. I think they, really, they were just playing his music so loud that it wasn't even clear on TV if they were booing him or cheering him or whatever. And the only thing was, he hit that stunner at the end, and everyone just exploded. And it was like, whoa. They didn't yeah, know they didn't do it. You, you, could, you could see the crowd. Sh when I when, you know, in the background, I could see that the crowd was totally cheering them, though. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're, uh, we're, he was in his, in his cheers too. I mean, yeah. he was maybe like maybe forty, thirty-five percent for Rocky, because there was a was lot really? of booze for him. Yeah, well, we could tell the booze for him. Yeah. What's, uh, what did you think of the? Uh, what did you think was the best match? The tables, ladders, and chairs. The Austin or the or the Benoit? I thought the, I thought the Austin Rock was the best. And then I had to go with Benoit and uh, Angle. That was a really intense match. Those first few uh, mix-ups that they had, where they were like doing the amateur style, that was really great. I thought that was real good. Uh, the TLC match was good, but there was a lot of setups. Like they were like, you know, setting up their next spot. I don't, I don't think it was just, just like slow spot. periods. Set up the tables and the ladders and a lot of slow spots. But uh, uh, the match I really enjoyed well, actually was, I guess, the intros was the Battle Royal. Uh, I know oh, yeah, that a lot of people what? didn't didn't know who they were where he was sitting, but where I was sitting, everybody marked up for for guys like Michael Hayes and crazy for Michael Hayes and you believe Jimmy got a big uh, applause. And uh, <laughs> he was I the best shape of everyone. Think about that. I thought when the goon came out, I tried to start an old cha Chauncey chant from World Class, 
A few people oh, knew what I was talking for, about. For Barry Irwin or Bob, uh, what's it, Bill Irwin, Barney Irwin's his real name. I keep getting uh -huh. mixed up. Yeah. I haven't seen him in so long. He didn't look old, though. Yeah, a couple guys knew what I was talking about when I was young in Chauncey. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, well, that's that's like early 80s world class. Yeah, that's like that's like when I first started watching wrestling. And I knew the Sheik was going to win for some reason. I just had a feeling he was going to win. <laughs> I think it was pretty obvious. There weren't that many other options for him. <laughs> <laughs> he, I thought maybe I, they'll I have the, like uh, ten guys on the outside and toss them on all ten of them. But then I thought, what if they drop him? He'd be dead. Yeah. I, think that the, I, I think that it was pretty clear the idea was for Slaughter to win. And when they realized that that was just not a possibility, they did the next <laughs> best thing. Yeah. Good. Um, he got a nice little pop Slaughter did himself, and I, I really enjoyed the battle royal. I mean, it was, I know it wasn't much of a battle royal, but I did enjoy it. It was pretty nostalgic to me and stuff. And uh, I thought the the Vincent Shane match was pretty good, but there were some slow spots. Mm -hmm. but, but I thought that one was pretty good. And I can see that Trixie got her revenge. I didn't think they were going to let her. Yep, she did. Let's Linda got out of the wheelchair. Um, actually, before we... um. Before we go on, before we go on, Ed, I want to thank you very much. I want to, let's, let's go through the results, and we'll, I also remind everyone the phone uh, number is one eight seven seven three nine two thirty two ninety nine, and uh, emails Dave Meltzer at yada dot com if you want to join in. We've only got an hour, so we're going to go through this as quick as we can. Uh, Eddie Guerrero uh, beating Test to win the European title due to help from uh, Dean Malenko and Perry Saturn, who were both added to the show at the last minute. Kurt Angle defeated Chris Benoit by holding the trunks. That was a really Super match. The one negative, I was watching this match and it was um very uh, authentic style. Great mm -hmm. wrestling early, um, and, and then when they went to the brawling, it was great brawling, great build. The negative, I thought that that ref, they did a ref bump spot, and then Benoit put the cross face and angle tap, but there was no ref. I thought that that really wasn't needed because the minute they did the ref, it just made it feel like every other match on the show to me. It, like it took yeah. Plus they were having so many ref bumps on the show that it was like just one in a match that you really didn't need it. Right, and um, then the finish with the trunks. I liked, I liked and didn't like it in, in the idea that they were having such a great match and it was such a cheap finish. But at the same time, that was probably the idea. You know, it's that old heel. Yeah, it was the whole psychology of the match with Benoit out wrestling at the beginning, and so Angle is the one that ends up going to the, uh, you know, cheating and brawling and everything like that. And it was actually a real good finish. I thought it was yeah, great. No, no, you know what that was? That was a total Jack Briscoe Dory Funk Jr. Total, mm -hmm. and I mean, I, we were, I was watching it with some friends, and that was exactly what we were saying. Was, you know, I don't even, I don't really think Jack Briscoe and Dory Funk Jr. did the wrestling that good, but uh, boy, that was um, that was. You know, the great, funny thing great... was, I was in a room with about uh, ten people, and I don't think any of them were like fans that had watched sport more than like five years or anything like that. And I'm thinking, oh my god, this amateur wrestling is going to just bore the hell out of them. And they were just sitting there, just staring at the screen, like totally intent watching this match. And I thought, wow. So, well, you, you know, know what? These guys will get into wrestling. And the crowd was applauding like in Japan. It was awesome. Yeah. You know what? Kurt Angle, when it comes, I mean, it's like his speed and technique on the mat, and also the way he made he made Benoit, you know, like look like he was like a, an Olympic wrestler. You know, mm -hmm. just by the way he let Benoit. It was really, um, uh, we, we praise that guy enough. Anyway, Ivory and China. At least it was short. China won. China. I thought that. Being that China was going to win, there, there's, I can say so much bad about China. I'm just going to say that it was the worst match on the show and leave it at that. And what I mean, a between... finish. That was so horrible with the press slam and then it was like she was reclining on the sofa to pin Ivory, making Ivory just look like absolutely nothing. And, and then the other thing was, the, the, the whole thing of this angle was, is that China's supposed to have this career ending neck injury. And then like earlier, on, you know, when they did an interview, I think this was actually on Heat, and, and they bring up China's injury and she like blows it off and just goes, he just goes, oh, I'm 110 percent. You know, there's no injury. You know, it's like yeah, it was, oh, that, that was great. Um, I mean, the whole idea was the reason she's not wrestling men anymore is because she now has vulnerability because of a neck injury. Well, so much for that storyline they created. Uh, then we have Vincent Shane, which uh, Linda got out of the wheelchair. Trish got her revenge, and uh, Shane won. Linda with a low blow, and then Shane pinned him. Shane took a bump. Uh, let's see, did an elbow off the crazy top ropes. flying elbow off the post again. Yeah, right, you know, through the Spanish language announcer's table. Um, that was, I mean, put it this way, Vince McMahon is not a worker, and Shane McMahon is, you know, only works a couple times a year, and, and given all that, they had a lot of interaction with Mick Foley. Mick Foley and Vince were beating each other up a lot. It, yeah. was, uh, it was entertaining for what it was. Um, yeah. Then we had... Vince, um, the, if you didn't see the show, Vince took a hell of a beating. So, uh... Yeah, he he said he was going to, you know, he'll get his just due or whatever. And he got in the storyline and uh, he took some, he took a he beat as well. 
the finish was almost like a bandaminator in that Shane was on the top. Oh yeah, with the garbage can. With a with a drop kick all the way across the ring, garbage can to the face of Vince, and that was that set up the pin. So that was um pretty impressive athletic move. The Hardys edging Christian and the Dudleys in a three way. Edging Christian ended up winning when uh, basically Rhino put Christian on his shoulders, climbed his giant 14 foot ladder, and Christian grabbed the belts and came down. And and they they killed each other. I personally liked this match more than any of the other ones because I thought that psychologically, the the, the crazy spots were better timed. And I mean, they, and they were, made more they, sense in the uh, like whole picture of the match. Right, and I, it didn't seem like the, the one that they had last year at WrestleMania, which was an excellent match. I thought that that was like more of a stunt show, and this one was a stunt show to be sure. But um, I just thought it built the drama built. I thought the guys were a year better as workers all across the board, all six of them, and mm -hmm. um, and just as good Jeff Hardy did uh, was, came off with a swan, uh, swanton off a 14 foot ladder onto a what was it, Spike and was it Spike and Rhino. Rhino? Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, there was this crazy bump that Matt Hardy and Bubba took um, onto uh, what was it? Doubled stacks of tables outside the ring, and then there was the big finish, which was what Edge, Edge, Edge speared Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff was like hanging on the belt again. Same thing from Raw, and Edge just speared him off and just oh. killed him. Oh it was one God. of those matches that where I thought, you know, I will enjoy this match far better watching it on tape, knowing that everyone lived. And I'm serious about that because there were some bumps like. I think it was uh, Christian took this one bump off the ladder, and I don't know if he was going to crotch the top rope or what, but he ended up going like over oh, he, the top rope. He overshot rope. it. Yeah, he, he over overshot it, and I thought, oh, my God, that guy's done. He's done. And he got back got up, up and finished, but it was brutal. I don't, I don't, guys, even, I don't know. I love the match, good. but it's like I don't really know if I want to watch another one of those again. Yeah. The, um, let's see. The uh, uh, Sheik won the battle royal, and then Slaughter put in the camel clutch. The ring introductions were fine. I guess, you know. A lot of the guys people really didn't know. A uh, few of the guys I think the people had fun with, you know, Okerlund and Bobby Heenan got to do the announcing. So, um, uh, whatever. Um, the, now, 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 what guys from WCW do you recognize? Because I saw, let's see, I saw Johnny Ace, Lance Storm, Jindrak, Stacey Keebler, Me. John Stasiak, uh, Hugh Morris. Uh, was there anybody else there? Chavo Guerrero. I saw more people than I did. Did okay. you mention Ms. I mean, Hancock? Was, she was there. Yeah, yeah, I said Stacey Keebler, yeah. Okay. Um... And then we had uh, Undertaker and Helmsley, and Undertaker beat him uh, with the last ride. A lot sure of great near falls. I don't, um, I mean, I, I think long term I will understand it, but having said that, I, it, it makes that last, ma last month pay per view finish where uh, Hunter beat Austin make a little less sense. And if, uh, and if Hunter is going to be the one challenging Austin, which I guess he probably won't be, but if he were to be, actually, this is. This makes last month's match make no sense. But anyway, so much for that. But uh, it makes you know, sense politically. Okay, but you know, here's the thing. Okay, Hunter doesn't job for anyone for a long, long time. You know, clean, right? So the so one he picks to job for is a guy who's already established. I mean, it should be for a guy who's not established. I mean, well, it was yeah. like it was the safe political job. It was the job that, like, you know, you can't say no to. But it was the wrong. You know, this match Hunter should have won. Mm -hmm. And Rock and Austin, Vince turned heel. Gave Austin Cherry hit Rock about 400 times with a chair, and uh, I thought that him. finish was so awesome. He hits yeah. him with the stunner. Rock kicks that. Rock kicked that about 50 different things. Stunner, uh, the rock bottom, everything like that. And finally, Austin just gets a chair and just absolutely laid waste to him, and then pinned him. And I thought that is an awesome finish. They went. They went 28 minutes. We're going to go back to the calls. We're going to go. Uh, we got full bank of calls. Let's go to uh, Tony. You're next up. Tony, what do you think of WrestleMania? Hey, guys, what's going on? Hey, not too much. Well, by 10.30, I was already, I said, this show is great no matter what happens from here on. So it was easily the best pay-per-view I've seen since I can remember. And I think that this pay-per-view is, is the punctuation on this wrestling boom for the last five, six years. I always said that the one thing that was missing from this boom was that big, big uh, stadium show. You know, when I think back of uh, the big boom of the 80s, you know, I think to three or six or eight, and that was the one thing that was missing, and, and now th they have this one. And uh, I just thought it was uh, unbelievable. I didn't like the ending. I didn't like the last five minutes of the show. Really? I would have I would have liked to just seen them have a classic clean finish, one guy or the other, and save that uh, turn, because it, it didn't work. The fans didn't care. And you, and you got J.R. and Paul 
telling us something that doesn't really uh, kind of mesh with what the crowd is reacting to. You know, that whole, that whole match, you know, you're right about the, it was the wrong city because if you, if you watch the match, Austin from, from Bell 1, Austin worked heel, Rock made babyface comebacks, and every time Rock made a babyface comeback, the whole place booed. booed. Yeah. And it was, um, it was like a reverse psychology, and they worked it, they worked it the way to like turn the crowd slowly but surely the whole match towards Rock, but the crowd just didn't turn. Where's Raw tomorrow night? Raw's in uh, Fort Worth. Which uh, you oh, know, Steve okay. Austin, I think, had his first match in Fort Worth. It's going to be it's going to be very yeah, interesting. I was just yeah. thinking it would have been something like I don't know if the fans would have been angry if they're more interested in the match or the angle, but I was thinking they could have just done something like at WrestleMania where they do the straight match, Austin gets to win with the stunner, and then do the rematch on Raw and do the whole swerve and everything on the Raw match when they're not in Texas, but they're in Texas, so it goes. Out. I don't think that I don't think that you want to give away the WrestleMania main event the very next night on Raw. Mm-hmm. I think that that mm-hmm. that's that already, especially with a forty dollars show. I think that yeah. people will, you know. <laughs> The crowd, just that sight of all those people was awesome. Uh, was. We just we can't imagine what it was like being there live, but it came across so great on TV. And that Texas crowd was great. They seemed to really react and weren't dead for really too much. But uh, a couple of miscellaneous stuff on the show. Uh, Regal and Jericho kind of didn't, uh, I thought it was going to be a better match than it was. They were kind of sloppy. Yeah. Agree with that. Yeah. Um, and also, too, it was also too short. Yeah, too short. I'm surprised they didn't get a little bit more time than they did. But, uh, and you know, I'll tell you, the four hour format really worked well because it allowed a lot of the, the matches to, you know, be longer and play out. And hopefully, uh, this will be something they'll go to more often for the bigger shows. Do you think that's well, possible? I think, I think, I think it's better to leave that for Mania. That way Mania can stand out and you can charge the higher ticket price right. for it. Because, because people feel justified. They got an extra hour out of the show and they paid the ten extra dollars. So I think, um, to me, a monthly thing. Oh no, no, four no just, hours, not, just get for the big shows. Yeah, the four, yeah. yeah, I agree. Just old. for the big shows to make them seem special. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I would agree on that. Hey, was he live? Uh, he was live. So it was really a five-hour show. Five but hours get, for that crowd. That's pretty. But uh, that's good that they, they really didn't die. Didn't, but they didn't really do anything. They only had one match on Heat, and it was a three-minute match. So realistically, it's still it was still a four-hour show because they didn't do anything. Okay. There was really nothing before the crowd. They didn't do any live interviews or anything like that. Everything was just on the, you know. But most of the people were there. You know, I mean, that building was, there were probably 40,000 people in that building towards the latter stages of the Heat show. So, I mean, yeah. you know. I think once a year, a five-hour show, the fans know that this is the big one, and they'll sit through it, and, you know, they'll be, I don't think, like, every month they could do the four-hour show, and then a Heat show, or even three hours in live Heat, and the fans would stay into it. It's just it's too much. Guys, I thought there was way too many ref pumps on the show. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. especially like in, in in needless situations, like in, the in triple certain H, matches. The Undertaker triple H, triple H match that ref need it. was out for like fifteen twenty minutes from an elbow. It was, it, and it was stupid. An elbow. It, it was stupid too because you know it's like how many times have we seen a ref out and and you know another ref runs down and this guy's out there for minutes on end and nobody no runs EMTs. in. No EMTs. Yeah, you know. The other, I'll tell you another minutes. thing that I thought in the Hunter match that was very bad. Was a camera shot where they showed okay Hunter took that choke slam in that camera pit and you know they had that gymnastics pit underneath so he took no bump at all you know where you're watching going oh my god and Ross is going he landed on concrete and I'm going yeah. like and I knew I knew it was gimmicked but I didn't see the gimmick and Ross is screaming it so it had a great impact on me and they showed two or three camera angles and you still just see him go down but you don't see him yeah. land and then they showed the last camera angle and you see him land in the gymnastics pit and it was just like. It was like a negative reaction. It was like that's not a bump. That's that's a that's you know that's something a that cartoon. Little kid... It's a cartoon. And then exactly. it got it worked with Undertaker jumping off the thing and doing his flying elbow onto the little gymnastics pit. It looked like two kids jumping on the bed. Yeah. So that one I didn't I didn't like that. Tony, I want to get running because we got a full bank of calls. Okay. Okay, guys. Okay. Thanks so much, Tony. We're going to go to Matt. Matt, you're next. Hey, Matt. Hello. Hey, what's Matt, going on? Okay, I'm on. Yes, yeah. you're on. Okay, uh, wrestle me. I would like to give a big thumbs up. That China match was so horrible, they shouldn't even put her on the card. See, she should be going to WCW. No, she, she shouldn't. No, she shouldn't. She shouldn't be going to WCW. She should be going no, to... No, but the way she that... She should be going to glow. Just... Yeah, I guess. <laughs> no, but that match was so horrible, I just don't know... How... You know, that match and the hardcore match was not that entertaining. I thought. I thought the hardcore match could have been more entertaining. As the Austin I thought it was Hilton... entertaining. I don't think it was particularly good, but it was entertaining. The hardcore yeah, was... match. It was, oh, you know, was hideous. 
Yeah, well, any any show that the big show then makes it look hideous. He and, tried. Well, he did try. Yeah, he That's tried. Right. And also, about the Give Boy, It Better Speak, speak huh? which, did you get a load of the physiques on those guys tonight? Like, boy, I, you know, I was told that everyone's peaking those cycles there, and boy, I sure, <laughs> I sure saw them, boy. That was some of those guys. Not mention any names. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, but with, with the Given Bad Wall, I thought um, I, I was for sure Brother Love was going to win, but either way, nobody oh, really cared. No. If, they, if he won, if they won, someone should, like, that That's that would be too much. Booking committee guys can't win that battle royal, no way. Especially because, you know, he was like, he wasn't even a wrestler, you know what I mean? He was just like a... Um, you, what was he? It was a talk he, show host. He did not knock, do that yeah. well with commentary. I, you know, I'm not trying to knock him, but he did really bad. Who did? Well, he is bad. Mean Gene. He's an interviewer. He is not a play-by-play. <laughs> no, he, he's once called play, he called play-by-play at wrestling. No, he was always terrible at it. That's why he never did it very often. I mean, he's I think Mean Gene's role awful. was to go out there and do every single one of his cliches in a uh, as hokey a manner as possible, just for the fans watching at home. Well, that's why they wanted to make it hokey, right? Yeah. Well, that, well, well, you're gonna have a good match with Kamala at 55 years old, or however, however old he is now. And also, uh, the tables are in chairs match. It was it was better than the SummerSlam one, which was surprising, because the SummerSlam one they did all the extreme bumps. I'm surprised that they both went through the tables, Matt Hardy and uh, Bob Ray. And as for the main event, it was really good. I, it was worth the forty dollars. Most pay per views, like last year, it was not worth the fifty dollars to get that all day and then the three hours. But this year, it was worth it. I thought this show blew away last year's. So in fact, I would say it blew away every single WrestleMania ever. I mean, because if you go down to 10, we had those two Even great matches. Even 10 had all the, the horrible undercard and everything. But had the horrible undercard. This this had, you know, three great matches and, and three other matches that were very good and, you know, and maybe one or two bad ones. So okay, let's go to John. To okay, let's go to John in London. John, what's going on? God, it must be like 6 a.m. there. No, London, Ontario, Dave. Oh, well, then you're just the same oh, time as the rest of us. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still Eastern time zone. Okay. <laughs> What's going on, John? Uh, not much. I thought WrestleMania was great. The only thing is that, like they always do with WrestleMania, I'm worried that we're going to get the identical card on Backlash. Oh, I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind seeing this stuff again. again. We, they we, could we, easily we, toss we, out Austin Rock again if it wasn't for the movie. They've they can still do it. Rock, Rock and I'm not doing this to complain. The card itself was absolutely incredible. Rock, Rock's I think most of the matches that were the... worth seeing again, we'll see again, and some of them, like uh, China and Ivory, we won't. Well, which well, is well, a very good thing. But... Guaranteed we're going to be seeing Hunter and Undertaker again because Hunter did a clean job, exactly. so he's coming back and getting a win. And guaranteed we're going to see Angle and Benoit again, and I don't mind that because I want to see him again, so that's fine. Oh, yeah. I'm not... You know, another thing with that ref bump in the Angle match with... Um, Angle doing the tap out of the cross face. It was so unnecessary if they're going to do the angle after the match where Benoit yeah. attacks him during the interview, puts him in the cross face, and he taps right there. Yeah. I got it right there. Why do it in the match and waste another ref bump? Yeah. Yeah. That was. And I mean, I'm not complaining about it. I'm actually, my only real complaint, and I really can't do this, is just with the tag team division with Edge and Christian winning again. I mean, they're my favorite guys. I'm Canadian. I love them, but. They've won all three, you know, TLC matches or whatever it is now. It's kind of like, what else do they have to prove in the tag team division now? By this point, I, I guess you know, more, I guess no, the, the, the writers like the idea of them as the champions, the other and the other guys chasing, you know, mm -hmm. obviously. And, yeah. Um, and they're, I, I can't knock them. They worked, you know. Anyone who won that match would have been fine. I don't think anyone really cared as much who won. I mean, after that match, they all, they all got elevated. I think. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess it's just I'm more kind of a throwback, and I enjoy seeing all everything kind of get blown off at the big card of the year. So I guess that's, it. I, guess, I guess that's why I'm kind. Of, but I admit a lot of the stuff did, so I can't really complain about it a whole lot, especially considering it was probably the best card ever. So <laughs> no, the best card ever, but it was. Uh, I think it may have been the best pay per view ever. Yeah, um, arguably. I, I said the best. If we said that the Calgary Stampede was the best WF pay per view ever, I would say this beat it easily. Would mm -hmm. you say? Would you agree with or no? Or no, Brian. I'd say so. I mean, Calgary Stampede, it was, it was so many great matches, but it was like a two-hour show, you know. Yeah. If they would have had additional matches on there, if they had four hours' worth, it wouldn't have uh, it wouldn't have done it. No, well, WWF in 97 had better not be trying to flush out a four-hour card. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have the horses then, I know. Brad in Mississippi. Brad, hey guys. what do you think of the show? I thought it was probably the best pay-per-view I've ever watched, and I've been a loyal, die-hard WCW fan who has nothing left now. 
But um, uh, you still got you still got <laughs> stage yeah. depressing. Yeah, yeah. Well, that makes <laughs> me feel a lot better, Dave. Thanks. <laughs> um, but just a couple of quick things, man. If they were worried about some of their other female stars developing a sable complex, that China completely they really came off that way tonight. That was exactly what everybody in the room was saying when I was watching. It was like, oh my god, there's another sable right there in the ring. Except yeah. worse. And especially if that's how she worked getting getting uh, cat fired. I mean, it was just amazing to sit there and watch her because she didn't tell anything. She didn't do anything. It was just there. I, I don't know. You know, I, in fact, a lot of, we got a lot of emails about, um, because Lawler was on the show and this, that certainly was the illusion that was made. And, and I don't know that China had anything to do with it. Um, I don't know that it really was anything more than, than people think Stacy had a bad attitude. I don't, I, I, but when I watched, I'm not, but, but there is a possibility it's true. She definitely did get that Eddie Guerrero angle nixed right away. I mean, there's no, there's no question. And to me, you know, watching her kill that angle they set up for her for no reason and then go in there with, with Ivory and it's like, okay, she's going to win the title and she's only going, she's going to win it in three minutes. There is a sell spot, which I never saw. And then, like, nope. to, do, to do that thing where she picks her up once and then pins her again, it's like she didn't need to do that. I just thought that yeah. that that was just way out of control. There was, you know. So, so. but the other thing, I I couldn't believe Hunter put over Undertaker. I thought it finished. I, could. Like, I, I, could. I couldn't I, either, I, actually. actually. What, the thing that scares you, me the most is that, okay, so now are they going to do Undertaker Austin again? Uh, like I, mean, I mean, I mean, I'm sure they, I'm sure they will somewhere, sometime, sure. Because, well, that yeah. looked like, well, I mean, that's the only, I mean, outside of, I mean, Rock, I guess, doing the rematch thing. But I mean, Undertaker's about the only one left, huh? Okay, well, the problem is, if Undertaker, if, well, well I mean, the thing is, Hunter that's is not a guy they need on top, though, working with Austin. No, it, it's not. You know, if if, if Hunter was going to do a job for someone, it should have been. Jericho, Benoit, you know, I mean, I mean, Undertaker doesn't need it. Undertaker's going to be over no matter. He's a he's a legend. He's going to be over no matter what you do, and you know, I, I that's why I kind of, you know, I saw that thing building where he was going to lose, and it's like, you know, it's that pecking order thing. It's like it's okay, you know, it's like it's okay to lose because he's a big guy. It's okay to lose because he's an established star. And it's like the whole gimmick is is when you put people over, is you put new people over, not yeah, you elevate I mean, people. Yeah, anyone. I mean, there's nothing wrong. I'm not. There's nothing wrong. Once he beat Austin, I don't know why he would lose to Undertaker. It just doesn't the one really. Thing, the one thing when I was watching that match, when I saw the finish, because like Hunter was up there going for the, uh, they went for the power bomb, and he went for the sledgehammer shot, and I thought, okay, this is it, and it wasn't. And Undertaker pinned him. My only thought was, okay, Austin is turning heel. The guy in Texas on the Texas show, so maybe they just want to get another Texas guy over on this particular show, and Undertaker's a guy. I I just figured they wouldn't want to, you know, send fans home happy with the summer main and the main. Well, first of all, the fans were the going to go home. the main didn't turn out that way, but the, the fans were going to go home happy either way. But I mean, it's it's like you're you're not. This show is not for Houston, Texas. This show is for the world. Yeah. And I think that they proved that by the main event because if they were booking the show for Houston, Texas, they never would have done that turn. They were booking mm -hmm. the show for the world, and they were working the show for the world. I mean, you know, the way Rock was working. I mean, it didn't work in the building, but I'm sure that the people sitting at home, you know, Rock was making the babyface comebacks. Anyway, we're going to go to uh, Dave in New York. Dave, what's up? Hey guys. I, unlike everyone else that's called in so far, was very disappointed by the show. And tell me why, because I'm really surprised. Okay. I thought that... Okay, let's go over the main matches. Undertaker versus Triple H was terrible. Because... Mm, terrible. Okay, here's why. Okay. The referee took the elbow drop and played dead for ten minutes. Well, that's, that was a terrible spot. Okay. <laughs> they did... They didn't do... Anything remotely good in during those ten minutes when they were brawling around the arena, and I mean the the finish was good. I did like the finish, but I did not like the rest of that match. Um, TLC I liked, but was below expectations. Um, God, what do you what did you I want? Mean, no, no, <laughs> below expectations. <laughs> no, let me explain. Let me explain here, because. <laughs> Okay, last year at WrestleMania, my complaint with the ladder match was that it had too long setup. At SummerSlam, they got rid of the setup, had a much faster pace match. This one was just kind of in between. Okay, you get my point there. And that I, just thought, I just thought that they setup. were. I thought they for 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 guys that were killing themselves. I thought they killed themselves much smarter than they have in the previous two matches. Yeah, I guess that's true, especially after that backwards bump uh, Matt Hardy took at SummerSlam. Uh, the main event was. Disappointing because the first half was not very good. I mean, the second half was 
quite good, but it's just not the blow-away show that you've been kind of pimping it as for the last half hour. Really? I thought it, I thought it was. I mean, you can't, I don't know how you can rank it as almost as a sh show on as being say better than the EMLL first pay per view from last year, or being. I, I haven't even compared it with that. Although I thought well, you said one of the best general pay per views. Yeah, I um I would say that there was not one match on this show that was better than the main event on the first EMLL pay per view. But I thought overall. Okay. Um. The first EMLL. You know, uh, that, had a lot that one didn't have a hell of a pay-per-view. That first email pay-per-view was, was a fantastic show and it had no bad matches, and this one clearly had bad matches. Okay. But this one, I, 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 they, were, they, were, they, were, they were different. I think both shows were outstanding. Um, but but um, I don't know. This was a, I mean, to me, this, this was, I mean, I, I was thinking like comparing this one to When Worlds Collide, and um, when, when Worlds Collide didn't have any bad matches, which this one had, um... Actually, when, when Worlds Collide had more heat than this one overall. Yeah. Mm, so there's, there, may, there may be an argument for that When Worlds Collide to be better. Although it wasn't a four-hour show, it was a two-hour show. So. Yeah, okay. Um, so okay. We've we got to run, we run, okay? Okay. We'll talk to you later, Dave. Okay? you want to say is that okay, the first ahead. five minutes of Benoit Angle were great. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, first? Were. Absolutely. Absolutely. I thought that, that, that whole match, except for the ref bump, uh, was fantastic. Let's go to Brooks in Maryland. Brooks, what's up? Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey. Doing really good. Yeah, um, I really like the show. Um, I thought the first half hour was a little too much like Raw, though, but, you know, it, it got better. <laughs> they didn't do as many vignettes and skits as I expected, oh, yeah, which I'm actually I'm glad for. That's true, yeah. Um, I love the uh, Benoit Angle match. It was awesome. The crowd was, like, cheering after every little, like, you know, toss around they were doing on the mat. That was cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I like the... Uh, the, the hardcore match, I couldn't believe they went backstage. It's like 65,000 plus, you know, watching. <laughs> that seemed kind of like crazy to me. I thought that was a hell of a video wall, though. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Oh, I, I, I think th I, I think the deal on that is is, is um, they had to do something different because because there was no way that those three guys were going to have a wrestling match compared to like most of the wrestling match on the show. So they tried to just have them do something totally different. Yeah. And they had to have the golf cart spot. Yeah. Yeah. Raven nearly got hurt because those guys don't know how to drive. I thought the whole, set, the whole set they had constructed back there, that was pretty cool, actually. <laughs> what, that little room? Yeah, with the window and all that. Yeah. I, I, I thought that room, you know what was interesting about the room? Uh -huh. Is that, um, because the room is so small, it made, you know, Big Show and Kane look so enormous. <laughs> yeah. Which they are. Yeah, that's true. Um, hey, no Pete Rose. That's no true, Pete yeah. Rose. Hey, who was the gobbledygooker? It might have been Hector Guerrero, huh? He was dancing. I, I bet know. it was. I bet. I bet that's who it was because, um, you know, they they they're still in contact with him, and they probably were happy to give him a payday. I don't yeah. know that it, that's who it was though. Yeah. Uh, I was a really the fact they got Ray Apollo and they could have got anybody else in the world for Doink makes me think that it probably was Hector. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was. I was really surprised at the amount of booze for The Rock though. I think like seventy five percent of the audience is going for Austin. That was surprising uh, to me. I yeah, kind of I, figured that was what was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, so did I. I. I don't know how they're going to explain the, uh, the Austin turn, because, you know, him and McMahon have such a history, though. It's going to be hard to do. Well, we're going to have to watch Raw tomorrow and watch that 20-minute interview that they yep. go forever yep. with Austin and, and McMahon out Maybe there. Maybe Austin trying can to come out in his suit and tie again like that one time they tried it. <laughs> he probably will. Okay, we're going to go to uh, we're gonna go to Damien. Damien, what's up? Hey, Dave. How you doing? Hey, doing really good. Good show tonight. Yeah, it really I was. I think, uh, I don't know, somebody from New York was complaining about it, but I had ten people here, ten hardcore wrestling fans, and, uh, everybody walked away happy, which is... What do you think was best, what do you think was best and worst? Uh, worst thing was Chris Jericho jerking the curtain. Okay. Worst thing, how, I don't know how this guy is still, you know, like, granted he's got the IC title or whatever, that means not much these days, but first match, come on. Mm. Uh, best thing on the show, uh, I'm sad to say this, but the best thing, the best match of the night was, uh, Shane and Vince. Nah. I think so. Nah. I, well, nah. the Benoit Angle thing was the best wrestling match, but the thing that had people most entertained, I think, was Shane and Vince. It was they very, were not more very entertaining. entertaining. They were not more Rock and Austin <laughs> had twice the heat of those guys. Yeah, they and, did. Um, that was quite a pop for me to standing up out of that chair, though. What's that? It was oh, set yeah, up perfectly. Linda standing up. Yeah. They yeah. ate that thing up. Yeah, the Van Terminator was, uh, 
Shane, what was that all about? Paulie saying hi to Rob uh, Van Dam slapped, again, or what? They slapped old Rob Paulie in the face. sending a message to Rob Van Dam. They're not going to hire him, and we're going to steal your move. By we're going to have the owner's son steal your move too. Eh, sad. Yeah. Um, what uh, what did I want to? Oh, yeah. The the main event was great. I just I don't like the turn. I wish they did it vice versa. Vice like, versa, meaning Rock turns heel. Yeah, I. I mean, I guess you can't do that because Rock's got all the crossover, the movie contract, and all that. You can do that. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. You can still do it. You you could still do it. But the thing is, it that was just that was their determination. I mean, you know, we've pretty much known for what six months that this was where it was going to end up. Yeah. And and pretty much it was going to end up on this show. So. Well, I was just hoping that you know, like you know, Vince is always on TV saying, "Well, the reason our fans love us so much is because we listen to them." Well, if they did listen, they would have turned Rock. Six months. They would have turned Rock. If they did listen the last three weeks, they would have turned rock. But by God, I'm a monopoly, and I can do what the hell he I can want. Do whatever he wants. He doesn't have to listen to the fans ever. He doesn't have to listen to the fans ever again until yeah. like Rupert Murdoch starts his own wrestling company, <laughs> which, is, which is not happening. You know what? The only other thing, one more thing about the show I didn't like, that Eddie went over and he didn't get to use the frog splash. Uh, yeah, he tried. I like yeah. when Eddie gets the, you know, when he hits that and wins a match. That's yeah. good. But okay. he didn't get we gotta run, we got we gotta run next, okay? Let's go to Tom in California. Tom, you're up. Hey, What's going on? Tonight? Hey, how's it going? Really good. I mean, that one caller who called her earlier and said the show sucked. I think he must be uh, somebody no, part of WCW because uh, you know, if no, Survival he's... Tobita had won the Gimmick Battle Royal, he would have given it a thumbs up. No, but you know what? He's a really smart guy. I mean, he sends me emails all the time, and I'm not being facetious. He's a really smart guy. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, it was a really good show. I mean, that sign of uh, 67,000 people on the Astrodome was really cool, and. Uh, Every match was just awesome. I just want to say it was the best forty bucks I've ever spent, really. And uh, wow, dude, did, did, wow! <laughs> <laughs> I swear I have something that I was going to say, and I better not. So was, that's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Jeez, uh, did this break a uh, WrestleMania six uh, attendance record? Yeah, it did. What, what do you mean? What do you wait? As far as what record. do you mean? Sorry, no, the attendance record for WrestleMania is WrestleMania three, and this did not break that. But the, but, the WrestleMania six. Was six. Now yeah. that was Hoosier Dome. That was like. Uh, that was Skydome. No, six oh, was Sky, Toronto. Skydome. Um, Skydome. Uh, okay. You know what? I will tell you tomorrow when I get the real number. I bet it didn't. But yeah. it, 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 um, so the number they will claim it wrong. did, but I, I just don't know about that, okay? It, it's, right. it's pretty close. Is the number on TV that they said, is that not correct or? Well, generally speaking, on every pay per view, it's not. So yeah. I'm just skeptical that it is this time. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But it's it's pretty it's pretty close. I mean, they had so, they had sold sixty thousand tickets, uh, a little over sixty, under sixty one, and called it a sellout. And you figure if there's three or four thousand paper. Yeah. So it's like sixty three, sixty four. And and when I saw the original sketch of the Astrodome, the sellout was somewhere between sixty four and sixty six. So. Um, you know that, that that you know whatever it is. I mean, they're, they're probably counting you know the chefs and those ten WCW guys in the corner and all that. You know, yeah. and gimmick battle royal and, guys. Yeah, the gimmick battle royal guys, and then some of the guys that went to the XFL game that you know yeah. things like that. I must say, last thing, real parking fast. attendance. Uh, I predict a new record low for the XFL game that I that went against WrestleMania. So there you go. Oh yeah, oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, that UPN that. game. Oh yeah. brother, that, you that think Vince will bury his own company in the press? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it's WrestleMania killed the XFL. Thanks for taking my call, guys. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Al, who's up? Okay, we got Mike in California. Mike, what's going on? Chilling, man. How are you doing this evening? Hey. Doing great. Actually, I got on kind of late. Um, what did you guys think of the show? I, I got on late. Uh, kicked ass. Yeah, it was phenomenal. I, I might be in the minority in this, but um, I know a lot of people were complaining about um, Steve Austin's heel turn. And I think um, what I want your opinion on is I don't think um, they really should worry yet until let's see how the fans respond once they're out of Houston. You know? Yeah. It's well, not, like I don't Rick know Flair what they're going to do in Fort Worth tomorrow either. <laughs> they got to get all the way out of Texas. <laughs> they may have to get out of the United States. <laughs> Maybe you can start drinking wine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, uh... There's ways to do it. They got, they, yeah, you know, they, they got, they, 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 everyone that they've ever tried to turn, they've been successful at doing, except, you know, they never did get Bret Hart over as a heel in Canada, but then again, he wouldn't let it happen either, so. <laughs> That's true. Oh, well, thanks for taking my car, go, uh, call, guys. Okay. All right, very welcome. Okay. Next up, Jimmy in Arizona. Okay, Jimmy in Arizona, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? You do a great job. 
Thank you. Not a problem. Listen, I, one way to get uh, make sure Austin gets over, I think, be uh, like uh, taking uh, like like Foley did in ECW, just do headlocks and stuff like that. Oh, the old school. Yeah, they're not going to do. You know, they're not going to do I'm real hardcore and doing the headlocks, doing the you know, arm drag stuff like that. I think people get a little, little annoyed at that pretty quickly. But I, I, just I think it'd be that, like an absolute last resort. Well, I think yeah, there's ways yeah, to get them over without was, doing anything like that. that I don't see that because that's that's but that's a that's something that like, like Foley was doing that as a spoof on a very limited number of fans, which happen to make up a lot of the ECW fans. You're For right. the general public, I don't think that's going to work. You're right. You're yeah. right. But I I hope they don't give up on the turn too quickly. I, I just I would hate oh, to think they can't. It, <laughs> they, yeah, they didn't, well, because just look back at Rock. They didn't give up on that guy. You're right. They, you're they, right. Listen, I, and you know, the only, I, I thought it was a great show. The only, but uh, I'm still trying to figure out why in the hell Hunter did a job in this match. In, er, excuse me, in this pay per view. It was the politically right thing to do at the at this time, and so that's that's why he did it. He wanted to make an example to show everybody else that that. Yeah, uh, and it was, and he didn't elevate. Well, now he wins for a year straight, and he can go. I put over the Undertaker clean. I, I put the Undertaker clean on with his move at WrestleMania on the biggest show in front of sixty-five thousand people. You know, I mean, clean. So yeah. you know, yeah. anyone can do it. But again, he didn't. But he didn't have to elevate anyone either. I mean. You protect your spot by putting over the Undertaker because the Undertaker and Hunter, you know, they're, you know, the Undertaker's not taking Hunter's spot. You're right. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Okay. Okay. Who's up next? Next up will be Jay in Indiana. Jay in Indiana. Okay. Hey guys. Hey. hey how you doing? Oh, not too bad. Pretty good show tonight. Oh, uh, thank you. You're not talking about us, are you? Talking about the McMahon <laughs> show? Actually, both of them. <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh, okay. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Seems like the Austin turn's the big topic tonight. Um, they pulled out just about every stop to get him over as a heel. They we're, tried their damnedest. Yeah, they were gonna, if, if, if anything was going to work, that they they did it. Unfortunately, the uh, the answer to the question was nothing was going to work that tonight. Yeah, well, they really was, did everything they could tonight. I mean, what more could they have done? Vince in their cor- Vince in his Vince. corner is about the best thing they could do. Yeah. Um, do you think it's going to be enough? In the long run, yes. Maybe just, maybe never, you know, maybe never in Texas. You know, there's some cities that, that some guys, you know, will never get over his heels in. You know what I, you know what I mean? Right. So, so, you know, it may be like in Houston and Dallas or something, like in the state of Texas, he's just going to be a baby face no matter what they do. It was kind of like, um, what was it? Um, actually, Angle's not a good example because, um, Angle actually did get booed in Pittsburgh. I have one. Most times. Who? Jerry Lawler in Evansville, Indiana. Anytime they're in Evansville, Oh, oh no no okay okay but you're you're right about that except um the thing is when Lawler you know I mean when Lawler has turned in Memphis in the past he has gotten over his heel now if he would do, I I don't know I think the Lawler probably in Memphis if he'd still stayed with the WWF at his age because he's such a part of their culture I don't think they would ever boo him true mm-hmm. um what'd you think of the uh, sorry Battle Royal I was glad it was short. The ring introductions, <laughs> as we figured, were the best part, and once that thing started, it was really, really bad. Yeah. The entrances were nice, though. Uh, it was kind of neat to see uh, Bobby the Brain and Gene Okerlund there. Do you think they'll be back around any time, or will you think yeah. it's just a one-shot? It was It was just for one shot. I mean, I, 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 mean, I don't even think he considered a tryout, because they had something that they were told to do, you know. Right. Get out there. And, it, was, it, was, it was part of a theme. You know, in a sense, it was almost putting them out to pasture by telling everyone these guys are outdated, just like Repo Man and all that. True. Yeah. You know, so I, I don't think that we'll... I mean, they could bring them back, like... I mean, you know, you know who was surprised that we, that we saw tonight? Because there's absolutely no reason for it. It was Albano at WF New York. I mean, they oh, just showed told me he was there. Oh, yeah, you didn't see it. Yeah, WF New York, they no, had Albano. I missed that one. <laughs> Alba- he was Albano, like picking uh, winners of the battle royal, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, with Blassie, you know, and um, Snooker was there too. Bert really Sugar. No, Bert, no Bert Sugar. By the way, do you know that they have that they have a new book out. That's oh, really? Bookstore. They have Volume Two, which is actually better than <laughs> Volume One. Leafing through it, it really was. It was. I mean, it, not that it was good, but um, yeah. All well, these, all it was these improvement. Stuff, there's all these there's there's all these WCW books. There's this bookstore that's going out of business. Actually, I guess Crown's going out everywhere, which is pr- another sad business going out. But I went to the local Crown, and there's no WF books. Beca- and it's like the, the shelves are bare at the local Crown here. There's like no books around. But there's tons oh, no. of DDP, Goldberg, <laughs> and that WCW history book, you know, sitting on the shelves with it. Like clearly, no one's buying. Anyway, I just want to get that out. Guys, next up is Aaron in LA. Aaron in LA, what's going on? How you doing, guys? Hey, doing really good. Quick question for you. What happened to um, the Christopher match being scrapped? 
Uh, I guess that they complained about it and put it back on. Oh, no, okay, okay. The, okay, here's this. Is, okay, it was on Heat. The Heat. Uh, Brian, yeah, Christopher, yeah. Brian Christopher was back on Heat. They they were going back and forth all week on um, on Wednesday that they had the match. It was actually supposed to be against uh, Malenko and Saturn. Then on Saturday night, after everybody was all happy about the, the fan fest, uh, because everybody on Wednesday, the guys were, that were on the show were mad because, you know, this giant payoff. They wouldn't share in, and they were, so everyone was, everyone's going to be on except for Kai and Tai and Lowdown, figuring that, you know, Kai and Tai, they're going to be happy anyway, or whatever. <laughs> so, um, so, so they were all happy through, through the access, you know, the biggest payoff we're ever going to get. Then Saturday night, all of a sudden comes the word, hey, all you guys are scrapped. And, uh, Sean Waltman went to Hunter and said, let me see what we can do about it. And so Sean and, uh, Justin got in the match with Blackman and, uh, and Brian Christopher, but Malenko and Saturn also got on the card in the uh, Eddie Guerrero match. So, so every those guys were all happy. Noah, uh, the only ones to see Crash Holly, Molly Holly, they weren't there. There were probably a few others that weren't there as well. Okay, boss man, boss man wasn't there. A few others. Okay, um, I thought the main event was nothing less than awesome. I thought the announcers actually made the main event. I think the Heyman and Ross was working so hard. Yeah, Ross was working hard. Heyman was very good. Uh, you know, Heyman was even good in the um. Where Heyman was really good in the Jericho Regal match, which, which you didn't see, Brian, because right at the beginning they set the stage and said that Jericho is going in with an injured shoulder, and then Regal worked on the shoulder, so it like made it like more than you know it made it, it more sense. effective than yeah yeah it was probably better on TV than it would have been live in the building because mm -hmm. of that. Um, I think there was a tie for the worst match tonight between the of course the women's match and then the six man match. I thought Taz looked horrible tonight. It was just short and it was in and out and um, I, I thought it was a bad match too though. There was um, what was it? I got there spot the tail like, end. Was that kind of just like a squash? No, they, I mean it was just like four minutes back and forth. But um, there were like two spots with Taz, like one spot where they were gonna whip him off the ropes, where I thought he was gonna, like this sounds funny, but like fall through the ropes because he was too short to hit the top rope, or because yeah. he went in at a bad angle. It would look really weak. Mike from Ohio is up next, guys. Mike from Ohio, what's going hey. on? Hey. Hey. Uh, yeah. Just got a couple quick thoughts. Uh, first off, I don't care what anyone else says. I loved the Taker Hunter match. I thought that was incredible. I thought that was the best I'd seen Taker work in months. He even busted out the tombstone. And yes, he did. We didn't mention that. Yeah. Well, but th th he can do he can do that anytime. That's because WrestleMania, and, you know, they're you know Hunter Hunter you know Hunter can get that ban rescinded, which some of the other guys can't. So that's not that's not like crediting the Undertaker or anything. That's just you know, they let him, you know, they let no. him do it, you know, because they really don't want him doing that too much right now. Well, yeah. Because um, if he does it, then the other guys will start wanting to be able to do it, and they don't want the other, they don't want the other guys doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also, I thought the hardcore match was, I don't know, I thought Kane got a better pop than what I thought he was going to get. Raven took okay bumps. Um, Paul White was freaking useless. I thought. Yeah. Um, and no, <laughs> I don't know why he was there. <laughs> Where was Billy, Billy Billy and he caused a car accident in that golf cart. I blame yeah. him for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that's all I got to say, guys. Thanks. Uh, okay. Who's next? Next up, Chris in New York. Chris in New York. How you doing, guys? Doing hey, really what's going good. on? Nothing much. Uh, I just want to comment. Chris Jericho looked absolutely awful tonight. Him and Regal just, I, I can't get over it. Regal, I fought in WCW a couple years back, used to put on some great matches. And now tonight, they just wrestled a sloppy match all night, back and forth, missing punches. What's going on there? It was sloppy. They didn't work. Their stuff wasn't smooth together, and it was the match was too short. You're right. Um, yeah, it, it, and, it was like and nerves. Was, I didn't see it, so it was just nerves or just not working I, together well? Or? It was one of the, you know, you know how sometimes Jericho has those matches? It was one yeah, of those yeah. where, where, where it's just like everything's off like a little bit and just off enough that you notice it. Like it's not horrible off and like, but it was. But it's, it's off. off. Do you guys yeah. see a heel turn coming in the future for him? For Jericho? Jericho? Yeah, he's way where, too I, over. I, I, I've been I've been hoping for that heel turn because he's so stagnated as a baby. Yeah. So yeah. He's just he needs a, something. Another point I wanted to cross out. I'm not a I am not a big fan of Rock or Austin, but I have to say in the main event, one hell of a match. But th did anybody notice? The time when uh, Rock bladed himself, when uh, Earl Hebner obviously dropped the uh, the blade next to the steps, and he went to pick it up, very sloppy. 
I didn't know. Oh, yeah, that. I was wondering what that was. It was Very like Brock walks over there and just fell down. I mean, and you saw oh, him. I, I remember when he walked over and fell down. Was that what that was about? Yeah. And, and then he was going to play went, then. He put it right in oh. his pants, and the camera went right off him and went to Austin and Hebner arguing, and then the rock, the camera oh, came back to the rock. That's right. Pleading very, very, I mean, I've been watching the business for quite a few years, and just watching that very, very poorly done in the main event. Yeah. That, that, that I just wondering why everyone was falling down during the shows. Like, everybody was tripping. <laughs> no, Eddie <laughs> tripped. Who's and the guy? Well, Eddie Guerrero fell down. Eddie jumped out of the ring and just, like, fell down. And then that, it was yeah, so that horrible. Was when, what was Tess that? got his yeah. foot caught. Yeah. And uh, oh, took forever to get out there. When he was finally released, everybody cheered. And with the rat yeah. bumps, that was just insane. They just kept on dropping all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, so, some of them were real weak, too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that that's for sure. I have to say, Hebner did officiate a decent match, but I don't know where do you think they're going to... Great near falls in that main event. Yeah. That's oh, yeah, sure. they were awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Well, that's all I have to say. Good night, guys. Okay, good night. Who's next? Dave in Atlanta. Dave in Atlanta. Hey, what's Dave. Going on, Dave? Brian, what's up? Hey, what's going on? Uh, not much, man. Salt Mania, it was pretty good. Sort of the local sports bar down here. Uh, and I was really impressed with the main event. Uh, in the bar, everybody was just popping every near fall in the main. And, I was, uh, too. <laughs> it was wonderful, I tell you. Uh, I personally thought that, uh, I thought Ivory and China was just a, uh, but, uh, my girlfriend was with me and she's watched a little bit of it and she's smart to the biz and everything. And, uh, she really did not like Angle versus Benoit. Really? And, For what reason? Well, what she said is, now, she, she hasn't followed the psychology and she hasn't been following nearly as long as I have. I've been following it since 85. She's, Kind of jumped on the bandwagon because she's engaged to me and don't have much of a choice. But uh, God, people have been engaged to me. They don't, they don't have a choice, but they still hate wrestling. No, nah, she 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 actually's got it. I I, ha, I got old UWF that I'm going to make her watch later. But okay, well, that's what you need to do, Dave. That old that UWF. UWF. That's, that's how you're done with all that watch stuff. She'll like Benoit. Take my word for it. Oh man, but uh, she said that basically a lot of the newer fans. What kind of turned her off was. The mat wrestling at the beginning, because <laughs> what she marks out for is the high spots, like in the tables, ladders, and chairs stuff. She yeah. loved that. She thought that was just the greatest thing. And but you can't do that every night. You can do that mat wrestling every night, every exactly. single night. Well, and I get those submissions explain, over. That's awesome. I was yeah, that's the other thing. They her. finally got those submissions over. That was what was yeah. Well, I was explaining to her that first thing you gotta do is they're building up that they were both equals on the mat, and then they went to do the suplexes and do that. And then after that, they went for the submissions and stuff like that. And and then the it, other the other thing was what make what was, was so good is they're doing all that wrestling, and then Angle by throwing the first punch really heals. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, rather than like everyone just out there punching and kicking, and like there's no one really healing because they're both doing the same thing. Yeah, they put Ben Wall over so strong with the wrestling too, so the punch meant so much more. And I was telling her also that you know it's similar to because it's got Heyman all over. It's similar to the you know the Sabu. Van Dam angle where you know both men are worthy of respect and one just disses the other and it's building for the heel feud, you know, heel versus face feud now. But uh, I was impressed with that. Uh, I personally enjoyed it. Uh, the one spot I did like was seeing uh, Kamala standing on Regal's desk and him freaking out. That was <laughs> that was, yeah, that was pretty funny. best use of Kamala in the last three, four, or five years at least. That oh, may be true. He was. Well, that may be true because he hasn't wrestled in about ten. <laughs> I but, can't remember the last time that guy was around. Mm, but it was a really good uh, card. It was well worth the money. We really did enjoy it. And uh, I tell you right now, I'm hooked to Figure Four Weekly now. Um, oh, thank you. I've been subscribing to it for a while, and I just love it and everything. You say some funny stuff in there. Uh, anyone who hasn't tried out should, you know. Get a subscription and just try it out. And Dave, I've been subscribing to you ever since about '93, with just a couple of interruptions. And I just think your uh, your newsletters were still one of the best in the business. I really have appreciated this week's issue too. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, Appreciate you've done some of your best work. Hopefully, you'll get a little rest now that we have uh, we have one promotion pretty much for a while. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, what anyway. was your take on a lot of the stuff that uh, went on? What, what was your think about thing about the uh, what do you call it, tables, ladders, and chairs match and the uh, Benoit match? Uh, I I thought both matches were tremendous, really fantastic. Oh yeah. Uh, what do you think? Do you think this will actually get Austin over as a heel? No, this one alone, no. 
No, but they they're gonna have to work at it. It's not gonna, this is not gonna be the world's easiest turn. No, tomorrow night at Raw. If they're at, are they in Texas tomorrow night? Yeah, they're in yeah. Fort Worth. Ah, uh, maybe Good luck <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Well, if anybody can do it, it's Austin and McMahon. Well, you know what? You know what he can do? You know, Austin used to work. No, you know what Austin can do? If he gets the mic, all he has to do is go, I hate all you people in Texas. I'm moving to Connecticut. That's it. <laughs> all he has to do is say that, and he'll be fine. Or either. I thought of an idea a while back of maybe, I mean, I hate fantasy booking, but if he walked up there and said, I'm with never told me to do it, I mean, there goes your macho. <laughs> all the yeah, guys out that. Yeah, that's that might kill him a little too much. It would yeah. kill him, but you know. Yeah. yeah. That, that'd get the wrong kind of heat, but uh, done correctly, it could be kind of humorous. Yeah. Dave, we got to get running, okay? I uh, appreciate it. Have a great one. Al, are we totally out of time? Uh, totally out of time. We're actually four minutes over, so. Uh, okay. I, I want to thank everyone um, for joining us on our first ever special, and I. It seems to be a pretty big success, and I'm sure we'll do it again. And for those of you who didn't get through, or people who send emails and everything, I'm sure we'll be talking about wrestling for the next two hours, for, for two hours tomorrow, five to seven. For those of you who have never listened to the show, we're on five to seven Eastern time every Monday through Friday right here on iata.com, and we'll see you all tomorrow at five.